Well, hi to everyone. Uh, this is week 10, can you believe it, of the Gladys Aylward story. I thought this was going to be the last week, but the stories I've read this week have been so wonderful and that I've discovered that I, I think we're just going to go on for one more week beyond this. So you know the story by now, this young parlour maid from North London who sets out on that extraordinary journey and goes out on that train, arrives out in northern China where they're setting up that inn for the muleteers and where they're preaching this message, this gospel of Jesus. And uh, she learns the language and her work starts there. And then uh, the elderly missionary who she's gone out to be with dies and she's left there without any funds or support. And then the Mandarin comes along and says to her, I want you to be the foot inspector. And she goes out and unbinds the feet of the children and a wonderful work is happening in the villages around. And people are becoming Christians. And by 1936, Having travelled out in 1932, she says, this is my country now. These are my people. And she becomes a Chinese citizen. And a work among children starts. And she has an orphanage there where many children come. And a work in the prison begins. And some of the prisoners become Christians. And there's reform in the prison. And then ultimately, uh, the Christians there uh, take responsibility for the prison when the uh, prison closes. Um, and they care for and they resettle the prisoners. And it was there that she she was first called our way day which became her chinese name meaning the one who does good in 1938 then the war begins and just as that's happening the christians in that whole area gather for a huge um conference time together and uh, the holy spirit is poured out on them as they rededicate their lives to god and then the second world war really begins and escalates um and there's bombing in the area and people have to start to leave yang chen including the mandarin who comes to tell her just before he leaves I wanted to tell you before I left that now I worship the God that you worship our way day your God is now my God um, and then the Japanese begin to uh, put out an, a, an award, a reward for the capture of Gladys Aylward um, and the, the, the leaders in the church say to her you need to leave and go and she reads the verse that from the Bible that night flee flee into the mountains and so she gathers the children together 94 of them and they start out on that long difficult journey it's only one route through because the main roads have been closed they have to go up and through and over the mountain pass and as they go they're singing some of the time count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what god has done they spend nights in caves in a buddhist temple out in the open on they go they're fed miraculously by some soldiers at one point when they're near to starvation um, and all the time they're asking this question um, how far to the Yellow River um, and then after 12 days they see it in the distance and then um, to, to Gladys's astonishment she realizes that there are no boats there is no ferry across because it's become part of the war zone and she said she despaired that night you remember she worried and she prayed and she prayed and she worried and they're there for two days two nights on the third day that child says to her Moses opened the Red Sea why can't you open the Yellow River she says because I'm not Moses but the child says God is still God and so they have a prayer meeting and they cry out and she says oh God I'm finished I can do nothing more I'm at the end it's only you Lord now and then they begin to sing that song again and amazingly the Chinese um, captain nearby hears them singing comes down takes pity on them and against all his orders he makes three trips across backwards and forwards across that yellow river taking them across to safety they must have felt incredible as they got to the other side and then they they, they get food they're nearly arrested um, they go on on that long journey they've done about two-thirds to where that red line is which is the river uh, and then they catch the train don't they with the other refugees and there are refugee feeding stations they have to go over a further mountain pass and finally they end up on a coal train where they lie in the coal um, from dawn right through that day to get further on towards Xi'an and then finally in the distance they see those towers don't they and they get there and they're told no you can't come in and they're put on another refugee train onto a city called Fufeng 
and incredibly there. There is an orphanage that will take the children. There is food for them. There are beds for them. Uh, there is safety at last. They can wash. And they gather that night and Gladys Aylward reads out Psalm 23 because they're so thankful that God has cared for them. Nobody has died. No one has got sick along the way. They're all okay. Um, and then they settle there. But not long after that, Gladys Aylward collapsed. She fell into a state of delirium and she was taken to the Baptist Missionary Hospital, which wasn't too far away. There the doctor said, this woman is suffering from relapsing fever, typhus, pneumonia, malnutrition and exhaustion. She should have been dead days ago. And so they nurse her in that hospital um, and she remembers drifting in and out of consciousness, but she survives. Um, and she's taken to live for a time with an, uh, uh, a missionary couple nearby who care for her. And after many months, she's back up on her feet again, though quite weak. Um, and she and the five adopted children, those ones that she'd adopted, like Ninepence and baby Bao Bao, who's now a, a boy growing up, and they move into Xi'an, into the city. Um, and there they, she starts to work for refugees in a disused factory beneath the city walls, and they get bits and pieces of money for the teenagers, the, ch who, the children who are now teenagers, um, doing sewing and different things. Um, uh, and then she hears that the Japanese could invade Xi'an, and so they move west to Chengdu, which is in Sichuan province. Um, and there the children are growing up, Ninepence gets married, and she continues on the work there. And one day Chuen, who was one of the boys who went on that great journey with her, appears. Um, and he's now a young man, and he's studying medicine, and he says, I'm going back to Yang Chen. And she said, no way, you can't go back. And he said, I am, God has told me to. And he said, I want you to pray for me because I want God to give me a stethoscope. I need a stethoscope. Um, let's pray that God would give it to me as a sign that I should go. The following day, having prayed, she's out in the market and a woman calls across to her in that dialect that she speaks um, and invites her in for tea. And she sees, Gladys sees in that woman's house a red box and in the red box, there's a stethoscope. And she said to the woman, how did you get this? And the woman said, oh, a missionary lady left it with me, but I, I don't know what it is. I don't need it. So she takes it back and Chuen takes it. He makes that journey back to Yang Chen. She doesn't hear anything from him for a year. And then she hears someone nearby speaking in this same northern dialect. And she says, have you been near Yang Chen? And he said, yes, I saw a young man there. He had something round his neck that he was always wearing. And he was baptizing people in the river there. She was so thrilled about this.